Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. Today is an exciting day for NVIDIA as they launch a new graphics card, but not just a new graphics card, but also a new architecture. Uh, and they're kind of doing it in an interesting and somewhat unusual way. Today we're taking a look at the GeForce GTX 750 Ti graphics card. So this is a mainstream video card, as you can clearly tell based on the heat sink and the size of the card, um, but it's very unique in a couple of interesting ways. Uh, one, this is a $149 product. So we know where it's going to uh, lie in the stack, who it's going to compare against on the AMD side. Uh, we're looking at the 260X, maybe the R7 265, R7 260. Uh, but this is not just a normal Kepler GPU. This is not a GTX 650 or anything that's been rebranded. This is the first GPU based on Maxwell. Maxwell is NVIDIA's next generation architecture. The GPU architecture is going to follow Kepler. Um, but in a somewhat unusual move, they have decided to launch at the mainstream product level as opposed to the enthusiast product level, which is what they have done for all of recent memory, as far as I can tell. Um, Maxwell architecture, it changes from Kepler in several interesting ways. For uh, example, the SM, the controller, the blocks of, of logic on the GPU are actually changed around. Instead of being groups of 192, they are now grouped uh, into 128 and actually subdivided in there into smaller blocks of 32 cores each. Uh, they have added a really, really large L2 cache onto this GPU. It's now a 2 meg L2 cache compared to, to a 256 kilobyte cache on Kepler. Uh, they have done a whole lot to improve performance efficiency, power efficiency, die space efficiency, uh, and the comparisons of Maxwell to Kepler are basically going to be how power efficient can these cards be. So it kind of makes sense for NVIDIA to launch in these mainstream levels. Also keep in mind that this part is still based on the TSMC's 28 nanometer process technology. They have not moved on to the next process node. And because of that, uh, I, I believe, NVIDIA didn't say this, that it's just easier for them to build a smaller GPU based on Maxwell uh, at 28 nanometer than it would be to build a large GPU. This helps them get a little bit of practice, and maybe if they decide to, they can release a higher end part for enthusiasts on 28 nanometer, but I think they're going to be waiting for the next process node for that. So Maxwell, Interesting, uh, if you want more details on the architectural changes, I won't get, them, get into them here on the video, but if you go to PCPer.com and check out the full review, you can get down into the, the deep technical detail of what has actually changed with Maxwell compared to Kepler. Uh, what we're interested in here today is more about the card and the performance and how it stacks up against the competition. If you look at the card itself, this is obviously a reference card. It has a fairly small cooler, um, uh, indicating it's kind of low power consumption. It's a 60 watt TDP GPU. Um, the inputs, or the outputs rather, on this card include a mini HDMI port and two DVI connections, uh, although that will obviously differ from partner to partner. Uh, one important note, no power connector on this reference model, and that's kind of a, a big push for them. Staying under the 70 watt TDP level helps them get into uh, a lot more mainstream systems maybe home theater boxes, maybe valve steam machines, things like that. It's, uh, they're, they're really going for power efficiency here. Now the primary competition for the uh, 750 Ti is going to be AMD's R7 260X. Now we have an R7 260X here. This is the two gigabyte model. Uh, it's a little bit beefier card, not, not a longer PCB, but the heat sink you can tell is definitely larger, heavier, the fan is more substantial. It does require six pin power. Um, this is a current, currently priced at $139 for the 2 gig model. So we're talking about a $10 delta for the NVIDIA card. And of course, we'll see partner cards release. We have here, this is the EVGA uh, GeForce GTX 750 Ti FTW model with an ACX cooler. You can see this is obviously a much larger part in comparison, although the PCBs are going to be the same size. There's a little bit of an extension here for a larger heat sink in order to fit the two fans. This does have a six pin power connector, so some uh, partner boards will have six pins, some of them will not. This one comes fairly high overclocked, uh, I think 80 or 90 megahertz over on the base clock. So uh, you'll be look out for a lot of these options and we'll have a review of this particular EVGA, EVGA card as well. So the 750 Ti, 
Uh, comes in at a base clock of just over 1,000 megahertz, boost clock of uh, 1,085 megahertz. It has two gigs of memory, has a 128-bit memory bus, uh, but thanks to that two megs of cache on board, it's actually going to have much higher memory performance than is indicated just by memory bandwidth numbers. Um, Performance-wise, when we actually look at real-world gaming, this is a great card for 1080p performance. If we looked at Battlefield 4, Metro Last Light, Bioshock Infinite, um, pretty much across the board, compared to the 260x 2 gigabyte card, you'll find that the NVIDIA GPU is 0 to 10% faster, depending on the game that we're testing. Um, I lean more towards the 6 to 7% being sort of the normal expected result. But it's doing so at significantly lower power draw. In our testing, uh, I think the GTX 750 Ti system was actually pulling 30 to 35 watts less power than the 260X. That's not really a big deal when you're talking about enthusiast cards, but it's kind of significant when you're talking about mainstream products that may go into systems that have power supplies in the 250 to 350 watt range. Uh, and so that's something to keep in mind. Sometimes they don't even have the power co connectors necessary to connect something like the 260X. Um, I, I do think that the AMD release or announcement last week of the R7 265 is going to be uh, a little bit of a hindrance to the success of the GTX 750 Ti because that AMD R7 265 was announced at the same $150 price point, and its performance is dramatically higher than the 750 Ti, clearly as we show in our benchmarks. Uh, the question will be, when does it become available, and will it actually be available at that $149 price? If it is, for people that are concerned about gaming performance, even at 1080p, the R7 265 is going to be the better option. If it's not available at those prices, or you are in a power-constrained environment, whether it be a home theater PC or uh, a small form factor design or even in notebook designs, which is where you know, this first Maxwell GPU will surely make it, um, then the 750 Ti is going to be a fantastic card. It's not perfect, um, but it's incredibly robust for the size of the GPU, uh, for the uh, power efficiency that it offers, the die efficiency that it offers. And it's really, really interesting to get a glimpse at the performance and efficiency of what Maxwell, the new architecture from N NVIDIA, can do maybe when we start reaching up into those higher end enthusiast parts. Make sure you go to PCPro.com and check out the full review. We have lots of benchmarks and analysis of the card, the architecture, and through a whole bunch of different games. And uh, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.